Well, okay then. This is my first proper podcast review. This is the kind of reviewing I'll be doing in the future, and this time around I'll be doing it completely unscripted, like I'm doing right now, so forgive me if I stutter a little bit or just cough a little bit here and there. But for today's podcast review, I'm going to be looking at the newest the newest MonsterVerse show that is on Netflix right now called Skull Island. Now, some of you may not be aware of this, but I love Godzilla. Oh gosh, do I. I first honestly got into Godzilla by watching some... What movie was it? Oh yes, I remember. It was Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. That was the first Godzilla movie I saw. As a kid... I wasn't allowed to watch it, any monster movies, but I, I believe I was like 13 when I saw this one, and it was probably just rated, what, PG? And I didn't even stick around for the human parts, no, I just skipped over to the, to like Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network and, and then went back and then saw Godzilla finding a giant dragonfly. That's when I knew I loved Godzilla. Godzilla is awesome. Like I said, uh, last month in my review of Strange World, giant monsters are awesome, you know? Man, that movie would have been a lot more awesome if there was a Godzilla-sized monster fight in there. But no. But I digress. Godzilla is great. I looked up what other movies there were under the Godzilla name out there. <coughs> Even the 1998 one that is, in all honesty, aged a lot better than we gave it credit for. Sure, it's not perfect. It's not nearly as as exciting as the Godzilla we have today. But you gotta take a look at it for a good, ironic laugh and some decent monster action that does wind up ripping off Jurassic Park. Now, that brings me to my next point. When I I was 14, me and my family went to see Godzilla 2014, the first movie of Warner Brothers' Monsterverse franchise. They're coming out with another Godzilla and Kong one coming out in 2025, as some of you may not be aware, but but when I saw this this new movie in 2014, I was completely mesmerized. Sure, Godzilla didn't have that much screen time. Sure, most of the screen time went to the Mutos. But I still loved Godzilla's scenes altogether. I loved when he attacked the Golden Gate Bridge. I loved it when he swam through that giant flooded area, that one shot where the flares are are going up in the air and you get to see his chest and neck. That's just an awesome shot, man. And of course, there are the monster fights. And they're really good, to be honest. Sure, they, the opponents, the Mutos, don't have any, any like powers, but they still prove to be like good, formidable foes, and kind of sympathetic ones, if we're going to be honest. And then there came Kong Skull Island. When I first went to see that movie in 2017, I had no idea that was in that, that same franchise as 2014's Godzilla. But when I went to see it, I didn't even we didn't even stick around to see the end credit scene where Godzilla and Ghidorah's prophecy was foretold. But this is, but I remember seeing the Kong Skull Island movie and being, oh my gosh, this has got to be the biggest Kong ever. I mean, like in 2014, he wouldn't have stood a chance against those giant snakes. How could he have fight, fought against them? In that movie, that Kong was like a hundred feet tall and. But, and according to Rick at Ralph, he was still growing. So, yeah, it makes sense to have him that big. Plus, he could take on Godzilla again, like he did six, over 60 years ago. And this time, it would be in all CGI, and we'd have an actual victor. They more than likely called it to a draw in King Kong vs. Godzilla, because Godzilla was obviously alive, and Kong just swam away. I mean... That's the only scenario I can think of. What do you guys think? But, of course, I digress again. Then came Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019. I went and saw that with my sister before I went off to college. 
I love that movie. That movie is awesome. It is a great adaptation of of classic Godzilla monsters, King Ghidorah, Rodan, and Mothra. It's a dream come true. We have been speculating about that since the end of the first Godzilla movie in 20, 2014. And then along came Godzilla vs. Kong in 2021. We find Kong again, this time with Skull Island being completely destroyed by a tropical storm, and now has to leave it to find this place Hollow Earth, but also goes toe-to-toe -to -toe against Godzilla, who of course takes the back seat. I mean, for a movie that says it's about Godzilla vs. Kong, there was a lot more focus on Kong than Godzilla, wasn't there? You could just call it Kong's movie. He was He's like the main... In the main protagonist of the movie itself. And Godzilla, he's just... there. He just goes back to his roots of destroying cities just for the heck of it. It makes... it's it's like he's stomping on ants and calling himself big. But of course he's defending all of humanity from Ghidorah's return as Mechagodzilla. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I bringing up the movies when this podcast review is supposed to be me talking about the Netflix show? Well, to be honest, I told you about those movies to give you an idea of what franchise the Skull Island show is coming from and why I found it disappointing. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. It was di It's just disappointing. You see it on the thumbnail. That's what I think of the Skull, Skull Island show. La 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 la. But I saw it last week on Netflix, and I was like, is that it? Is that where it ends? Come on, man. They could have done better than that. I mean, let's talk about that now, shall we? Skull Island is the newest entry in Netflix's many original animated shows lineup. You got Dragon Prince, Green Eggs and Ham... All that jazz, but here, Netflix is trying to, to add themselves to the MonsterVerse list. They're trying to cash in on this golden goose, but they didn't do enough marketing with this. This is the exact same problem with Strange World. They didn't really think, of, think it out how they were going to advertise this show. They didn't do anything heavy with it. The Super Mario Brothers movie that I watched recently, and I gotta say, is really good. It was marketed like mad. It was all over social media. Promos, trailers, clips, the works. And memes. Memes all around. And that movie wound up making over a billion dollars and is spawning a new franchise from Illumination. Eat it, minions. But... This show, all they had was one measly trailer. Give credit to, to Strange World. That movie had like maybe two or three trailers to it. Tops. But they only had like one trailer for Skull Island. And that is not how you advertise a, a show or movie. Sure, the show's not making a profit back from Netflix, but that's a good way to get people more invested in your show. That's a good way to get your point across. So, let's talk about the show itself. What is it about? Well, a crew of explorers that are definitely not from Monarch are sailing out in the ocean to try and find some cryptids. They find a girl named named Ava, I believe. The characters are quite forgettable. And it's and their ship is crashed by a giant kraken monster. Two boys, Dave and Charlie, I believe are their names. They wash up on shore with Ava and her giant monster pet named Dog. Yeah, Dog. And now they must survive on the island until they can get help. Dave, or Charlie's father, is on the other side of the island with the rest of the team. And they come into contact with multiple monsters from Skull Island, including, you guessed it, Kong who is not the main focus of the show itself, either. Yeah, that was one of the biggest letdowns of the show to me, was that Kong wasn't like the 
the main bad guy, or not bad guy, King Kong's not a bad guy, the main monster good guy of the show. We don't, we've never cared about the humans in the Godzilla movies, but we are more invested in the humans of the King Kong movies. Godzilla, see, was all about mindless destruction, well, and the humans were just there to pad out the runtime. In the King Kong movies, however, the characters are more fleshed out and have more fun with each other. Mainly because it's the Americans who thought about it and didn't want to make it too gritty and forgettable. But, I digress. Back to the show. First, I want to point out the animation. The animation in itself is reminiscent to that of anime like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Re Revolutions, Revelations, or whichever and e even some DC animated movies like Injustice or things like that. Now, I'm not against the animation or anything, like, no way. I'm actually for an animated take on the world of the MonsterVerse. It allows people to draw their, their classic monster movie stars in their own style and allows them to, to breathe in, in any cartoonish form. Godzilla had a had a few cartoon shows by by Hanna Barbera, I believe, and even King Kong had one too. He even has like maybe two shows on Netflix. I don't know. It was a there's a lot of animated shows based on Kong. But next to the but the next part, the characters. I'm not a, particularly a fan of any of these characters in this movie, to be totally honest. Like I said before, the Kong movies had more fun with their characters. They had them well thought out, and they each had their own moments. Like, you got uh, Samuel Jackson in Kong Skull Island, who is a vengeful war general. You got James P. Sullivan, who t basically takes the part of Carl Denham in that movie, and of course gets eaten. And you also have Carl Denham in the Peter Jackson movie, voiced by Jack Black, who also goes on to voice Poe and Mario. And uh, let's see, who are there any other characters? Um, Andy Serkis, yeah, that's it, and Jack Driscoll, Jimmy, Mr. Hayes. And that's like all the characters I can name from from like that version. And oh yeah, in in Skull Island, there's Hank Marlowe, who also voiced Wreck-It Ralph. But in Skull Island, what the heck? These these characters are not very easy to sympathize with. Dave and Charlie are annoying. Ava is is chatty and and a bit too brutal for a child her age. She has a friendship with Dog that's hardly even a friendship, to be totally honest. You hardly see any friendship with them at all. And then there are the other characters. There's even Kong, who... What did they do to my boy? Not even Kong is that great of a character in this. The main thing with him is... There's like two things to remember about him in the show. First off, he has a rivalry with this random Kraken monster who wants to take Skull Island and tries to intimidate Kong by throwing giant whales at him. But that's just that's just a pretty forgettable plot point. And then there's also number two, in which we were we see that he has a friendship with a native girl who is not an Iwi, by the way. She doesn't look anything like the face-painted Iwis from Kong Skull Island. She looks more like Nimona from that new movie that came out the other today or yesterday. And I can't really get behind that part either. You see, Kong already has a little girl to look out for, and she was raised by the Iwis in, in Godzilla vs. Kong. This girl that he meets... This random girl in Skull Island, she's just there. Yeah. She only dies in the episode she's introduced. But, come on, that's you could do a lot better with that. You could say that she is the Iwi girl. You could say that this show takes place between Kong Skull Island and Godzilla vs. Kong. And can we talk about that for a second? 
We have, n in the show, it's hardly ever established as to which timeline this show is taking place. Is this taking place directly after Kong Skull Island in the 70s? Is this in the 21st century? And how long ago is it? How, like, is this before Godzilla King of the Monsters or Godzilla vs. Kong? Or is it in between? I'm not sure. It never tells us. We're never told. And let's talk about some of the creatures, too. It makes you... It kind of makes me wonder what some of these animated creatures would look like in live action. Like, there's a crocodile, a dodo bird, giant chameleons, a giant red hawk, and some crabs and some weird cat turtle things that disguise themselves as grass. We don't see any of the animals from Conskull Island in this show either. We don't see the giant spider with bamboo legs. We don't see that giant log mantis. But we do get a skull crawler, like one skull crawler. For those of you who don't know, skull, tr skull crawlers are giant bipedal snakes with faces that look like skulls and are basically, as Hank Marlowe puts it, the devils on the island. They, they're the main adversary of Kong, so why aren't there more of them in this show? Why is there only just one? Huh. And in this show, we don't see any indication or mention of the, of the Kong Skull Island voyage that went there that year. I mean, I mean, there's no mention of Hank Marlowe, the Ewees, or anything. There's a sword that's brought up at like one point, like. We love it when ancient artifacts such as swords are revealed to us. That could give us a realm of mystery, but... And then, it's just destroyed like five minutes after it's given. What in the world, show? What are you trying to do here? And let's talk about the monster fight at the end of the first season, and quite possibly maybe the only season altogether, because... It's, it's between Kong and the Kraken. The Kraken is still trying to take the throne from Kong, but Kong beats it into Calamari, and then he nearly kills Ava and Dog, separating them. Oh no. Like, we're, we're like really supposed to be invested with them, aren't we? We're supposed to, we're supposed to sympathize with them, but I, I can't really get behind any character in this. There's, not any heart. There's not any good humor. They try to be humorous, but it just comes off as annoying and, and unbearable. I can't... Not even the movies in the MonsterVerse had this many quips. Sure, the 2014 monster movie... The 2014 Godzilla movie tried to be dark and gritty, but you could still get behind the monster action and the, and the destruction and things like that. And... Movies like King of the Monsters or Skull Island, sure there are quips here and there, but there's still a fun romp that revolves around the monsters. Like, we gotta get Kong to Hollow Earth, we gotta find out why Godzilla is, is against humans now. And there are also why the monsters are hibernating themselves, like... Like, why, why are they all hiding? They shouldn't all be hiding, Godzilla made the place safe for them after he beat Ghidorah. And, of course, for those of you who, do kn who don't know, the reason why Kong didn't arrive in King of the Monsters was that he, was, he had to be on Skull Island to keep the skull, ch skull crawlers in check. I don't know, this show, is, it's become a bit of a mystery to me, and it's probably become a bit of a mystery to you guys, too. Humor does work, don't get me wrong. Humor can work in a monster movie, but it's got to be executed well. It can't take up the entire bit of dialogue coming from your characters' mouths. You could also, you could also make it a, a silent movie that shows just emotions. You could do a primal thing. Like, have you ever heard of primal? Primal's by Gendy Tartakovsky. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong, but that movie had little to no dialogue at all. There was only one bit of dialogue with Charles. With Charles Darwin in that one episode of season two. But other than that, it's just facial cues and expressions. You get to interpret what these what these characters are saying without them outright saying it. They could they can also teach us to to judge books by not judge books by their cover and not 
and how to read facial expressions. Like you could be you can learn interpersonal communication from this. But and even Kong learns this in Kong Kong Godzilla vs. Kong, he learns sign language where he bonds that with that little girl from earlier. But he has no such relationship with the girl in the show either. I was expecting a lot more from a MonsterVerse mo show than, than any of this. I have expected a, there to be a lot more Kong, but we spend more time on like the, child, the child characters, the little human characters. Them tra traipsing through the jungle and encountering dangerous animals like dodos and giant bugs and crabs and, and other armed humans. You think they'd, they'd have come in contact with the Ewees out there, but they don't? They never once come in contact with the Ewees, the, the like Skull Islanders. They never once meet them. They never once visit their village. So did they like get wiped out by the time of the show? Is this right before Godzilla vs. Kong? Never explained. And there's also the part with this woman, Irene, says that Ava is her daughter, but... In all honesty, like I said, I can't feel anything. I can't feel any emotional attachment to these characters. The one, only one I want to be emotionally connected to is Kong. Kong is the main reason any of us came to this show at all. I wanted to come to this the show to see a lot of Kong action, fighting against, against all the monsters of Skull Island, maybe even another Kong. And then him realizing that with that other Kong dead, he truly is the last one left. They might they might do that in the Kong Godzilla X Kong New Empire in 2025. I personally want to see that. I missed out on seeing Godzilla vs. Kong in theaters because of COVID. That and it was also on HBO Max too. So why not? But this movie, this show, this, it just disappoints me. It makes me, it makes me feel empty. It does, it tries to take itself seriously, but also tries to be a little goofy at times, but it just fails at that. It just doesn't do it right. It doesn't even, uh, mm. sorry about that. It acts like it's not even in that universe at all. I will admit that, that there is a little bit of a clever cameo by Godzilla in like a flashback scene where the father looks over his boat and sees something big and blue glowing in the water. That's obviously Godzilla. Heck, maybe he'll, he'll make an appearance if this show is somehow greenlit for a second season. Hey, Velma is greenlit for a second season, so why not this? What I'm saying here is that this show could be a lot more than it is, but it decides not to be. It decides to be its own its own thing. It tries to be a Kong and name only show. It tries to forget all about that. And the arc with Kong itself is only it's only brought in brought into the show in the last two episodes where we see Kong's life before the humans showed up. We don't even get a mention of of Madison Russell or maybe Alan Jonah or things like that. Nothing. We're not told anything ab about where the where or when this show is taking place. I mean, uh, we all expected more from this show. We all expected there to be a lot less humans and a lot more Kong, a lot more monkey. Mm, but I can't see myself liking this show. I can't really like it. I want to like it. I really do. But there's something about it that just that just feels like something else could be there. So if, there's definitely something missing from here. There's definitely a, a lot more potential this show could have. Maybe it could pick itself back up. I hear that there's a show coming about about what happens to Godzilla after the 2014 movie. I would like to see that show. I think it would be a lot better than this movie if they give it a lot more focus on Godzilla than the humans, because they're forgettable. 
no matter how much you want to hate to admit it, they're kind of forgettable. It's the same problem with Strange World all over again. But if you have different feelings towards this show, I'm totally fine with that. It's just my opinion on it. It's just me giving my thoughts. What did, what did you think of this show? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave a like on this video. Follow me on Instagram as the Dino is Mad. And I will see you all on the next video. So this is Mr. Mad Dino signing off. See you next time.